uh, I started reevaluating the time statement uh, statements in the New Testament, and that's kind of what got the ball rolling for me. Uh, and, and so I knew that there's there's no way that a time statement could be at hand for thousands and thousands of years, and you know, uh, or even longer. So. Uh, at that point, I didn't know really what to do, um, and in 2005, there wasn't a lot of uh, the, the social media that you have today, such as YouTube and other things, so YouTube was just getting going, so um, I didn't know what to do, and so I kind of sat on it for about 10 years, but I had in the back of my mind for at least a decade that the possibility of the second coming had already occurred. And so eventually I found, um, through YouTube and social media, I found uh, other people who believed the same thing and did some research and finally got, got to where I am now. So that's how it, that's how it began. Okay. What do you see? Um, I, I think they have seen it, at least in part. Um, I know. I'm a big Foy Wallace fan, and um, <clears throat> I've, I've gotten almost everything that he's ever produced in, in booklet form. And I know Foy was the main preacher who uh, got us out, I say us, the Churches of Christ, out of premillennialism. He almost did it single-handedly. And uh, so prior to that, we were going in the direction of the premillennialists. So Foy brought us over combated that, defeated that within the church, and basi basically got us to all millennialism. When Foy came out with his commentary on Revelation in the 60s, uh, that changed a lot. Of course, I wasn't a member of the church then. I was born in 68, so I really didn't have any, I wasn't involved in that. But I, I do know the era that Foy preached in. So when he came out with his commentary on Revelation, I, it, it was revolutionary in the church. A lot of the brethren, from what I hear, uh, were not happy with that. They didn't agree with him. Nevertheless, uh, they really couldn't refute it. And Foy was a partial preterist. So when, once I got turned on to the book of Revelation and got Foy's commentary and read it, uh, that's where the, the hardcore journey into full preterism began for me. It began with Foy, commentary, uh, Foy Wallace's commentary on Revelation. Once I read and comprehended that, I realized that all of the book of Revelation had to be already fulfilled. And if it was already fulfilled, then all the statements in it, such as in Revelation 1, 1 and Revelation 1 and 3 and 22, 16, uh, had to be fulfilled because the, the book ended the way the book began. And so if it ends the way it begins, then you, you automatically, or at least I did, knew that uh, these were, this, there's a, there is a framework here. And so um, it, everything in between chapter one and chapter 22 uh, has got to fit within that framework. So that wasn't very hard to figure out. Um, and I think that Foy Wallace believed that, yet I don't know why he didn't go into full preterism. Um, I think Foy Wallace and, and other of our preachers were aware of works like Charles Russell's, uh, or James Stuart Russell's works, uh, The Parousia. He did that back in the 1870s. and. So I know that our brethren are aware of that. I know that they are aware of the eschatological term of preterism. Um, as to why our brethren don't see it, I don't know. I think, I think some of them did. I think Foy saw it, uh, but I don't know why he didn't carry it out to its logical conclusion. I think he would have had a lot more success uh, had he done so. But now that he's dead, he can't. He can no longer speak. So we we we're we're just up in the air as to why he didn't. Uh, but there are other people who did, and and um, there there are other brethren like Guy and Woods. Uh, he he saw part of it, 
and our brethren can't help but to see at least part of what we are saying that the Bible teaches. I'll give you an example. When, when Guy and Woods debated uh, the other brother uh, named Frank, his last name was Franklin. He was, a, I believe, a Church of Christ member who went into Pentecostalism and embraced uh, miracles. When Guy and Woods in the Woods-Franklin debate, I think it was 1972 or 1974, Guy and Woods admitted and even made a chart, and his book on the debate I have in my library, and this is why I know this, he made a chart and he stated that the last days was not the gospel age, it was the, Jew, it was the end of the Jewish age from AD 30 to AD 70. And Guy and Woods used that argument against Franklin in his debate and he even made a chart on this and if you if you look at the chart you'll see that that is our position our position as full preterist church of christ preachers is that we have been taught wrong about the last days the last days is not a uh, the christian age whatsoever it is is reference uh, referencing the last days of the jewish age which guy and woods believed that's what guy and woods taught now there were I know that there were a lot of preachers who disagreed with Guy and Woods on that statement but Guy and Woods saw what we see as to why Guy and Woods wouldn't carry that on through to its full end I have no idea um, so we have brethren today such as myself um, and other brother now uh, because of the, the lectures and different things. I think social media has another example. Um, Franklin Camp, uh, he's a very famous preacher, or was, and he's also passed away. He believed, uh, at least partially, he was a partial preterist and that he believed uh, that, Matthew, oh, that Matthew 24 was about the destruction of Jerusalem and uh, so was the book of Revelation about the destruction of Jerusalem. So. These, these men saw bits and pieces, and I think that more than likely they saw different bits and pieces, and I think that if, if we really knew the whole of it, if you added them all up, you're going to get either something, either exactly what we're teaching today or something very close to what the full preterist movement in the Church of Christ is espousing today.